Hey guys, thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a Bic lighter back up and running. Uh, whether it's for prepping or survival or whatever it is, there's very few things that can go wrong with a Bic lighter that takes it completely out of the game. And I'll show you a couple quick tips and we'll do a couple little experiments so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but you can almost always get one back up and going and, and make you a flame. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, so with a Bic lighter, uh, we'll go over kind of the anatomy real quick. There's the canister, the vessel, whatever you'd call it. There's liquid inside, liquid butane, which is your fuel. Uh, you have the valve on top, which releases the vapors, and your spark, your wheel that, that makes your spark. <clears throat> so if you have no fire, it's going to be one of two things. Either you have no gas escaping, or you're not producing a spark on top. Um, one of the most common ones, especially in cold weather, is no gas. Uh, it takes a lot, a lot of fire making to run a bit completely out of fuel. Um, so, any gas, um, as far as I know, any gas can be turned into a liquid one of two ways. Either by pressure, a pressurized container, or temperature, by getting it colder. Um, and it's a combination, it's a back and forth sliding scale kind of thing. So you can have almost no pressure, a paper thin container, but if you have it cold enough, it'll form a liquid, no vapor will be produced off the top. On the other side, you can have it at a very high temperature, but with a really strong container, you can keep it a liquid. It's a sliding scale back and forth kind of thing, and that's important. Um, the other thing is the valve that releases the vapor that comes off of the liquid, uh, the valve could be bad. Um, the easiest one to solve is that it's too cold. So, like we said, uh, pressure or temperature can get it down to a liquid that doesn't produce vapor. And here's a quick and easy little experiment that I'm going to show you uh, to prove that and see how you can overcome it really easy. All right, so for this little experiment, I've got a Bic lighter. You can see that the top is not wet. Uh, up here that makes the spark is not wet. I've got the vessel down in ice. And you take it out, it's making plenty of spark, but it's not making fire. So if we take it and hold it in our hand, the, the heat from your hand, or you, um, if you've got to make fire right now and it's really cold, uh, armpit, groin, mouth, you could stick the back end of it in your mouth. It's going to heat it up a whole lot faster, especially if your hands are cold, if you're out in the snow or something like that. And usually it doesn't take too awful long unless you're below zero. But just have it against your skin, a warm part of your body. Do not apply heat. It's a plastic container. And now we're back to fire. Obviously, I've just had it in ice for a couple minutes. Put this, put a bic in your fridge or freezer, leave it there for an hour, take it out, and it's going to take you a little bit of time, even rubbing it in your hands or if you stick it in your armpit, for it to come back up to temperature, because you've got to get this liquid back up to temperature for it to produce vapor up in the empty cavity, and then the vapor will come out the valve on top. It's pretty simple, it's just how this li it's how any lighter like this works. Um, so the next thing. A bad valve. I should have done this at the end of the um, problem solving part. In a life or death emergency situation, I would take my sharpest knife with the finest point and I would bore a small hole inside. Do not, do not try to do that just for kicks and giggles to see if it will actually work. Because yes you can bore a small hole, but the orifice is going to be you're not going to be able to gauge it and once you light it it's either going to melt the plastic and it's going to come back together and seal itself back off or it's going to start opening up you're going to have a rupture and that is the absolute 100 percent worst case scenario last ditch effort and i think I even yeah last ditch effort don't try it at home leave it that no spark um this is another very common this side is very common 
that the uh, inner workings up here where your spark is made up in this area gets wet. Um, it could just be from outside moisture, you dropped it in the water, whatever it is, uh, it's wet or the sparker is broken. There's one simple solution to both of them and that is find some way to depress the switch that opens up the uh, valve on top a piece of electrical tape, duct tape, a zip tie something that will let it constantly produce the fuel out of the top, the vapors and spike a, strike a ferro rod over top or if you don't have a ferro rod or you just don't want to do it that way um, you can eliminate the liquid pretty simple. If it's broken you're going to have to use a ferro rod as far as I know um, with the wet side <clears throat> you can blow on it it'll take a little bit of moisture off the best way to do it and if you if you think about it, it makes pretty good sense is to put your mouth on top of it just around the top leave some room around the bottom and inhale because if your mouth is up here inhaling it's going to draw in the outside air which is going to be drier than the air coming out of your lungs if you would blow on it that's putting moisture back in it. It's not as moist as it was in there, but that's putting moisture back in because your your uh, air that you exhale is moist, damp, humid, whatever you want to call it. That's why uh, if you want to see if somebody's breathing, you put a mirror, a small pocket mirror in front of their face, the condensation forms and you know that they're breathing. That's why that works. So inhale instead of exhale, and we'll address that here in just a second. We're going to do a little test. Um, if it's broken, we're going to duct tape it down, strike a ferro rod over top. And we'll do that test here in a second. So I'm going to gather up some stuff and I'll show you exactly how they work. Alright, so for our water test, uh, we're going to try three different things. We're just going to take a bowl of water, and dip our lighters down in there, make sure everything's good and wet. Just kind of shake off the excess. And we're going to have a control. I guess it'll be that one. And we have our two. They're wet. They're not producing a spark in there. And they might every now and then just a little tiny one, but that's not how a big works. It produces a big spark. So, um, what I found is about 10 inhales, <sighs> inhaling, um, gets you ready to light a fire. It's not like it's completely dry, but it works. Uh, so we'll try 10 inhales, 10 exhales, see which one works. We'll get off the excess. And now we'll try this one. Go ahead and make whatever gay joke you would like below. So there's five. We're at the halfway point. We'll try it. Oh, actually worked. So we'll try five exhales in this one. Still not doing it. Yep, there was one but it's still not reliable enough. Do the inhales, not the exhales. Uh, I've done it a hundred different, not a hundred different times. I've done it a bunch. Inhaling works better. All right, so we've cleared this solution with inhaling. Um, it's just gonna be more, more better, gooder. If we have a broken striker on top, our wheel's spinning, but it's not making a flame, we're gonna go ahead and tape down the switch the valve, whatever you want to call it, and then we'll strike a ferro rod and show you how that works. Alright, so we're going to simulate and say that, well this one's still wet. So this is our wet one, our control, it's still not sparking. But if we tape down, this will simulate that it's wet or that the striker is broken. And you can always test uh, and see if you're getting gas out by listening. Put your ear up to it and you'll hear it coming out. Um, it's going to be hard to do on camera. Now we're going to try this. Didn't work very well because it's up against this wall, but there it is. Blow it out, make sure it's out real good. And this is a ferro rod that I've never used, so it's got the coating on the outside. But even at a distance, 
we're able to get it going. So if it's broken or wet, you can take down your switch and strike the ferro rod uh, and it'll work. Another uh, thing I want to talk about real quick if you're making a fire kit or whatever, a lot of people get wrapped up in putting in all kinds of um, dryer lint and this, that, the other. If you're making a fire kit, a Bic lighter, uh, I think should be in every single one of them. A tea candle, I'll link a video below showing why it's so important to light a tea candle, or have a tea candle. You light it, lay it down, get your fire going. A ferro rod for the reasons we just showed or your lighter's completely down and you've got to make tinder and stuff. And another big lighter. Uh, two is one, one is none. And guys, that's a simple little uh, trick that you can, you can play around with at home. If it's wet, suck the, suck the moisture out, don't blow. Uh, if you're not getting spark, use a ferro rod. Um, if it's too cold, warm it up absolute 100% last ditch effort don't try it at home it's gonna get bad probably uh, make a small hole in the side uh, because that's all that valve does is let the pressure off which the hole would do the exact same thing it's just you can't stop it and it's probably gonna melt away and it's probably gonna be bad um, if you like the video like subscribe do all that whatever <clears throat> there will be links uh, here to subscribe probably here for other similar videos on my channel. Uh, but remember guys, you need to be prepared to thrive while others survive. Thanks.